Hi, everyone. In this special episode, we spotlight the transformative power of African women in the culture of giving. We discuss how their generosity not only nurtures communities, but also inspires global trends in philanthropy. Our discussion emphasizes the significance of investing in women, showcasing stories of resilience, mentorship, and empowerment. Join us in celebrating the spirit of Hashtag Women Give as we highlight the role of African women in fostering a culture of generosity. Welcome to the Ubuntu Giving Podcast. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and happy International Women's Day. My name is Bita Me, and yes, you know, we have a special episode today, a women-led episode by myself, and drumroll, there's someone in the building. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi, Bita Me, Madonna here. Yay! <laughs> I am so glad we are doing this. I am so happy. In this episode, we are about to shine a spotlight on the ways that African we- African women <laughs> have contributed to and are transforming the culture of giving on the continent. Today, there are no guests or hosts on this particular episode, just a fellow colleague, two colleagues, two friends sharing their <laughs> thoughts and experiences around women-focused generosity. Madonna, how do you feel about this episode? I am excited. Lord knows we've been cooking this for a while, so I'm glad that we get to do this together and share it with the world. Me too. As you all know, we have a culture here at the Ubuntu Giving Podcast where we do generosity exercises, asking our guests questions, you know, about, you know, generosity experiences. But this is a special segment because it's Women's Day. And with respect to the Women Give campaign, Giving Tuesday is gathering stories of empowerment, generosity, and impact from across the continent that celebrates women. We are calling on women to give voice, to inspire, and accelerate investment in women's futures. After listening to us share our stories, if you are interested in sharing a story, just send us a short video or a text that captures a bit about who you are, what you do. Tell us about a time a woman invested in you and give some sort of message motivating everyone around you to invest in women. Madonna is going to take a lead on this, by the way. Madonna, do you want to tell us about <laughs> a time? <laughs> Reflect on a time a woman invested in mm. you. I am reflecting on this for sure. And Bidemi, that's a really hard one, to be honest, because you know the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Um, I'm not a child anymore, just, just <laughs> to clear that out. Uh, but it, it's hard to pick out just one woman. So let me just give this a shot. Um, Rona Sozi Carpenter is the first name that comes to mind. And I started out my legal career with her as my leader. And she was managing uh, the legal department of the organization that I was working at. And while working with her, she kept prompting me to explore beyond the work that we were doing at the time. It was mainstream legal practice. And she felt that I could apply my law in more impactful ways at the time. So unprompted. She got me into my first coaching program and paid for all of it. And by the time I was done with that program, I had decided to reroute and ended up in the development space at CIFSO, where, yeah, it's it's been quite the journey since. And again, I met uh, Peace Kadondi, who was the program lead at the time, who invested her time to teach me all that she knew about philanthropy. And a couple of years later, here we are. And just one more, just because, yeah, it's it's really hard, (laughs) this one. Jackie, (laughs) Jacqueline Asimwe, who goes without saying, is the CEO of Sisos Africa. And 
she has continued to give opportunities for growth, for reflection, to listen and ideas, all of which have shaped my experience and growth as a leader in the philanthropy space to date. So Bidemi, tell me yours. Ah. <laughs> Let's give this a shot if you can just give one person strictly for this. I know you now and I love who you are right now. So good oh, to ask women. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to talk about my mom. Hear me out. I didn't I did not thing. want <laughs> it wasn't my intention to talk about my mom, but I want to for a yeah. specific reason. Mm -hmm. So growing up, um my mom was quick to sort of teach us that schooling isn't necessarily education. So she really trained us on other forms of learning. And I'm talking about skills acquisition. At a point, I was learning how to sew. I was learning how to bake. Um, yeah, and and we had the shop as well. She would teach me prizes. She would teach me, teach me how to attend to customers. I feel like mm -hmm. all of those things kind of shaped me into the kind of wow. person that I am now. Like the way I work, the way I mm -hmm. approach my work, it's because of her. She she trained and instilled yeah. this whole, right, this spirit of doing a good work and doing it well. That's something my mom did. And I'm always grateful for it. I feel like it speaks to everything that I am now. When people work with me, I like them to feel as though I really contributed to that work because that's how my mom is. That's how she trained us to work. And that's how I like to work. And I also live that by this principle of doing out to others what you want them to do to you. So I, I do want people to take me seriously. So I tend to take them and their business and their ventures and anything they are doing to make the world a better place very serious. So that's one one. <sighs> That's that's beautiful, Bidemi, and we get to experience the blend of all these things that mother, that your mother invested in you, uh, mm. from your creativity to just how you treat people, the customer care. It's still short <laughs> today. <so. laughs> I'm telling you, that was a good you. investment, mom. <laughs> Thank you. So there there are a lot of women that have invested in my life, Matuna, and. I, I think I want to talk about one person who I feel I investment in my life led me down this path, me being in the, in the development sector. And that is Mrs. Echo. Um, I served in the brigade, 13th brigade to be precise in Calabar. And s during my service here, everyone is expected to do something, give back to the society in some way. And I wanted to do something really meaningful. I wanted to give back to women widows actually of um, soldiers that had died as a result of the insurgency going on back then in the country. I wanted to do some sort of material relief to to them, cervical cancer screening, reach out to kids, their kids and um, um, students as well, all within, you know, where I was serving at the time. And Mrs. April was so amazing. She connected me with everyone. She gave me access to anyone at all that would help make this a reality. And it was such a massive success. In fact, it led to, you know, us, it, it led to me having certain friends. We are still friends to today. We'll still carry out community services once in a while. We still go to orphanages once in a while. I mean, we go to orphanages every month, to be honest. So we had that community development service and I just loved that sense of fulfillment, I could not find it anywhere else, even when I tried to work somewhere else. And I, I, did, I told myself, you know what, I think I need to find places where they're doing good. They're making some sort of impact. They want to make the world a better place. So I think Mrs. Equal's support, right, it gave me that confidence to want to do this and be who I am today. It, it does make sense, Bidemi. And I love that she gave you the opportunity and it has since had a ripple effect, you know, beyond just her one act of generosity. And I think it says a lot about what it means to invest in, in women um, because investing in women 
will yield you more, let's call it compound interest in more ways than a financial. And this is just a pure and beautiful depiction of that Bidemi. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, now, because of her, I love building. I love building communities. I, I feel like um, making the world a better place is what every second of your time. And if, if anyone is, is, is going down that path, if that's your path, then we are destined to meet. And I think that's why I've met you, Madonna. Definitely, most definitely. It wasn't a chance encounter. I think it was definitely a, a, a destiny encounter, this one. A destiny encounter, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and be demi, just, just for avoidance of doubt, did you say you served in the army? Yes. Oh, oh okay. So not, not in the way that you think. So we do this okay. thing in Nigeria where when you're done with school, you do a one year service for your country. Okay, just one oh. year. And um people serve in different places. Some serve in governmental institutions, some serve in schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just happened to be at the Nigerian army. It was an interesting wow. year. I learned a lot. I, I can I can <laughs> imagine because <laughs> Yeah. You when thought. if I say that the first instinct was well, the next time I see Bidemi, I, I had better be standing at ease or at attention. I don't know, but yeah. No, it's one not of what you think. <laughs> but I consider joining the army for real because I loved what I like it, it it was a really good year. And it is to service above self. So yeah, that that would be an interesting um angle of generosity to explore all together. I know. <laughs> but that's I a conversation know. for another day. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, we're going into the podcast proper. So I'm going to ask you a question, Madonna, and then you can me with your question. So okay, let's talk cool. about your work. Like, Let's talk mm -hmm. about what you're doing currently as the country co-lead of Giving Tuesday Uganda, as program lead for CIF Source. You have a community philanthropy program going mm -hmm. on. Can you tell us how it connects? Um, well, I, I just want to say that since we're talking all things women and generosity, I think the community foundation model in and of itself has women written all around it in the sense that it it capitalizes on, on solidarity, on pooling resources, which is typical of the way that women give. And uh, the community foundation incubation program at CIFSOS Africa is said to be a 12 month opportunity to support the growing ecosystem of community foundations in Uganda. We had undertaken research in um, 2021 uh, to explore community foundations in our landscape and what exactly, how do they operate, what motivates them to give, all things community uh, foundations in Uganda. It's, it's a learning journey for us, but it's also even more exciting um, that we get to learn alongside leaders that are passionate about development in their context in Uganda. So that's briefly about the Community Foundation um, program, incubation program that we're running at Sips of Africa. Amazing. You know, I, I, I do believe that there's, there is a focus on women and if you could touch briefly on how women's cultural practices influence you know contemporary trends in global generosity when i think about certain traditions and cultural practices in uganda specifically toro and ankole uh, what comes to mind is when in not actually toro and ankole it's it's bachiga uh, in the teso region as well and and I think more broadly speaking, there's a lot of communal economic activities, communal farming. And, and when I say farming, it's the entire cycle from planting to harvesting and sharing the produce at the end of it all. And with that communal, with those communal activities, it also meant that the social activities were held with that same spirit. And I think that embedded in all of that was the appreciation of, of solidarity um, which seems to show up in the way that philanthropy, specifically when it comes to community foundations, operates, that pooling of resources, that 
um, spirit of, of being embedded in that community. You're not coming from the community to impose certain ideas on, on them or a certain agenda on them, that you're a part of them. You, you breathe the same air, you face the same challenges and you're equally passionate about resolving them. So because of maybe that because of that tradition of, of doing work in a communal nature, it makes it easy to champion initiatives like community foundations because of the solidarity and, and yeah, because of the so solidarity that they embody. And again, to say that the contemporary depiction of this would be the community foundation model, uh, but also pooled resources, I would guess. There's a lot of charity drives that are not necessarily an individual giving um, out of their own accord. Again, those those tend to happen to debt, but there's a lot of, let's come together, there's, there's this cause, let's give through this particular channel. If it's a mobile money number, if it's um, through a, a specific representative that you pull resources because when you pull them together there's there's more reach there's more impact and and yeah that's I think that's one of the things that shows up in in our culture versus the contemporary trends in global philanthropy the other would be paternal aunties from Toro and Ankole no Toro specifically that's a region in in western Uganda where paternal aunties would give gifts to the bride. Uh, specifically, th there were milk, like milk calabashes, if I should describe them that way, called right. Evianzi. And they would give these gifts with instructions on how to use them and keep them safe. And I think women's giving is often accompanied by extra support. And that's a trend you tend to see in, in generosity lately. You receive a grant, it doesn't stop at that. There's a bit of capacity building, which True. yeah, I may have some reservations on that. But yeah, a check-in, some information sessions, a bit of hand holding. So it's not just a, a passive gift of here, have, buy, but I'm here to walk to walk this journey with you. This women pursue relationships beyond the gift that they that they give. That's what comes to mind with them. Well done, Madonna. And thank mm -hmm. you for, you know, really talking about the community philanthropy, the incubator program. I, just, I keep calling it community philanthropy program here. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so for you, Bidemi, uh, what do you think uh, influences the generosity of women? Uh, factors that enable and perhaps hinder our generosity as women? So Madonna, you, you realize you ask like three questions in one. <laughs> but um, I mean, when we look at what makes women so generous, it's it's like discovering layers. On one hand, there are incredible strengths and values that obviously embodies their generosity. And then we have things like empathy. We have a deep sense of community, the desire to make a real difference in people's lives. These are huge motivators. These are, you know, women have this ability to put themselves in someone else's shoes and feel compelled to help. There's a power of seeing, you know, the impact of their generosity. It's, it's, it, I don't think it's something we can help. We really want to make a difference wherever we find ourselves. Right, it could be in the smile of a child that we've helped, or in the community that you've seen growing stronger, just like what you're doing. And there are practical stuff that also plays a huge role. Having the resources to give, right? You talked about some hand holding, some capacity building, things like time, money. These are big en enablers, right? Having access to networks or platforms that makes it easy to reach out, that makes it easy to make a difference. When women are supported by a community that values giving, it's, you're adding more, right? You're really causing a ripple effect. On the other side, let's let's talk about, what's the word now? I'm, I'm thinking of something I can use. Commitment. So it, with things like work, family, a personal challenges, um, personal projects, finding extra to give can be tough. 
So there is the willingness, but there's also some, you know, the bandwidth, the strength, the emotional strength, mental capacity, economic barriers. We still have the, you know, problems around wage gap. Sometimes even when the heart says, I want to give, the wallet says, how? And then we have societal norms. Um, in Kenya, for example, femicide is, is still a big issue. And mm-hmm. women have to deal with all this in addition to wanting to contribute to their communities. Mm-hmm. Sometimes these things can can underestimate and it, it also makes people overlook the contribution of women. It makes it harder for their generosity to shine through, to be recognized. And I'm grateful for platforms like this. I'm grateful that I'm a podcaster because it allows me to share stories about my grandmother, for example, or how I just talked about my mom and Mrs. Echo who contributed to my life. And I'm hoping someone listens to it somewhere and is inspired. Awesome that we have things on platforms like this. Facing this kind of obstacles can be, it can be discouraging but in terms, it's it's a mix, right? There is the internal drive and then there's the need for external support. You talked about solidarity, which is a big deal. But one thing is for sure, when women are empowered to give, they can move mountains. My question to you, Madonna, let us talk about digital platforms and social media. You know, a tweet can spark a movement. I mean, hashtag mm-hmm. even Tuesday, guys. It can unite mm-hmm. people across <laughs> continent. You know, social media have become a powerful tool for change. We're hearing a lot more stories. Yeah. We are empowering women. We are giving voice. I mean, we have different organizations that have, you know, been created thanks to to digital platforms. How have digital platforms and social media influenced the way African women participate, you know, and lead philanthropic initiatives? So begin me. Um, yes. I think this podcast is going to be about solidarity, essentially. <laughs> because we have to talk about women and not talk about solidarity and the way that it's expressed. And even when I think about how social media has influenced African women and the way that we participate in or lead um, philanthropy initiatives it, it's one of the things that comes to mind because I think those platforms have eased how we express say solidarity and and in a way you know we're talking about cultures of giving earlier and, and talking about doing work in a communal way and that that was limited to a geographic community I would say but Social media, of course, has opened this up to global communities, I would say, and they transcend borders, they transcend color, they transcend all the things that have typically separated us. And because of the initiative or the cause that we are championing, we get to rally alongside each other and express um, a desire to help one another in that way and that's one of the major highlights for me when it comes to the role that social media plays and i think the other thing that i've I've seen social media do would be to normalize philanthropic practices that are that were typically not that were typically meant for men i would say (laughs) men or maybe family foundations or corporate bodies or something like that and I'll, I'll I'll explain this shortly so when it came to foundations or legacy foundations it would typically be either family foundation with a male at the head but I think there's been growth of more female-led and um female-led foundations or funds because of, of again social media and, and normalizing women with that are able to 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 raise money and to run big money essentially. So from the Melinda Gates Foundation to the Nabagarika Foundation in, in Uganda at the moment, um I think it social media got us thinking beyond addressing immediate needs as as women and I don't know like the, the next meal for today or our <laughs> daily bread issues 
to thinking generational wealth, not just generational wealth, but how about my legacy as a woman? How about my interests as a woman beyond what I've, I've, what my family wants? What do I want to advance long after I've left? So I think it, it has got us in a place of thinking beyond now and, and, and forced us to or open their eyes to explore things like generational legacies that are centered on female figures. That's that will be one of the things that have noticed about um, social media and and digital platforms and the way that they're influencing the way that women give. And I think there's also been a change in perspective still around women and resources. And, and more trust because then we get to showcase what we're capable of because with social media you sort of you write you can run your campaign of course uh, apart from censorships and certain apps being blocked in some countries or something like that but from the, the political issues that may arise from that you have a certain level of control around the narratives and how you shape them so women have um, the opportunity to show, the impact that they're giving is doing and perhaps increase the, the, the trust that's accorded to them in this philanthropy space. Honestly, Madonna, I, 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 I hear you. I mean, I feel like while social media has its cons, you know, due to cyber insecurity, cyber bullying, I feel like social mm-hmm. media has opened our eyes to, to many possibilities. I mean, now I know I can be anything because I've seen women becoming powerful right running campaigns given in such big ways mm-hmm. and it, it has really eliminated barriers it has given us a platform to show help receive help across different mm-hmm. countries even so thank you for sharing your thoughts on this I think this is where you you hit me again <laughs> and I try to answer <laughs> your question this is not hitting but um be demi We've, we've talked about the ways that women give and maybe it's not so direct, but the things that we're learning about us as women and about the way that we approach philanthropy and generosity all together. What patterns have you noticed in the ways that, that women give? I think one of the beautiful patterns for me is, and I'm going to say something we've been saying from the beginning of this podcast, the principles mm-hmm. of solidarity and sisterhood. Women tend to approach generosity, not just providing support, but as a way to build and strengthen. Um, We are beginning to see platforms that ensures women have access to opportunities, right? And, And there is strong emphasis on relational giving, giving, creating, and deepening connection between the giver and those that they are supporting. Um, This approach is fostering a a sense of belonging, a sense of family, a sense of community, which is very powerful. In terms of patterns also, I think women often prioritize causes that have um, direct impact on people they care about as well. So there is that trend, right? There is also this trend of supporting education, supporting access to opportunities, supporting healthcare, supporting um, um, initiatives that are aimed at empowering girls, adolescents. And this is me speaking because I'm, I'm a women's empowerment advocate. I, I speak on menstrual justice. So probably I'm a little biased with this particular pattern, but I feel it reflects a deep understanding of what what women consider as as one of the rarest and biggest forms of generosity to them and it it has never been about the money and I find it very interesting because when this particular question really makes me think something else I think I can speak to is collaborative giving women are likely to join circles giving circles where they can pull resources Mm -hmm. together and I knew you talked about this earlier on it is something Mm -hmm. it wherever there are spaces of collaborative giving you will find a lot of women there you will find a lot of women in such spaces so I mean sisterhood solidarity collaboration you know these patterns have influenced contemporary philanthropy it it has also given a rise to more inclusive more community focused models just like you mentioned 
I mean, for me, three things, solidarity, sisterhood, and strategic collaboration. And I feel like a lot of organizations are seeing this trend and trying to tailor what they're doing um, to ref- to reflect this, this pattern. Bidemi, that's powerful. I think we should change the name of this podcast to something to do with solidarity. Just right. saying. Right. Mm, I know. Because... <laughs> The inseparable, it's I think it's part of our DNA and, and we can't help but work that okay. way. I don't know if it's an environmental thing in the sense that we've the situation calls for it or it's it's something that we are wired to do. But yeah, right. it's definitely a lifestyle. Well, I do have a question for you. Sure. And don't. I think this is my last question. I promise. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the role? of women in leading and innovating the culture of giving? Um, I think I'll just sum it up in one thing that I think we're really good at and that we have the opportunity to do as as women because I think it's changing, yes, that, that women are, are no longer as, as overlooked, but of course there's still work to do in that regard. But in that space of, of being underestimated and and cast out it's a very interesting place to dream and to conceptualize what freedom can look like and it's in such a place um, that we need to tap into the gift of dreaming and imagination and the beauty about when women imagine and dream things is that it's usually followed by a work ethic and the necessary support from the sisterhood to actually make things happen. So there's so many shifts in the philanthropy and development space that are happening. And I think that it's at this point that it it would be good to just step into our radical imagination skills wherever that child in you is I guess because children are really really have wild imaginations so to tap into that inner child that inner girl and just dream as big as possible and dream dreams that are not restricted by the current circumstances by the traditional ways of, of doing things uh, restricted by the, the limited access to resources um by all the limitations that we're currently faced with, that's the whole point of dreaming, to go beyond. And I think our role in this case is, again, not just to dream, but to follow through with the work ethic, to make giving more impactful, more human, um, a more clear and, and true expression of Ubuntu, a more clear expression of our relational nature over our transactional nature as as women, uh, forgiving to speak to to the need and not to our self interest. Um, it, it's really, I feel that our role in all of this is to dream and to work to follow that dream. And one of the things that comes to mind is um, a quote <laughs> from a book by. I think it was Adrienne Brown. And in this quote, she's calling us to sort of dream and, and she seems to state that what what we're living in is, is more of science fiction. Yes, I believe that all organizing is science fiction and that we're shaping the future we long for and have not yet experienced. I think her role is first to dream and to fictionize this thing, but also to follow it with the work ethic and to tap into the support that we have in the sisterhood to shape this future that we long for but have yet to experience. Mm. That's it. Wow. I need that book. (laughs) We'll be sending one right to you. Thank you. So I I think you have just one more question for me. So we are fair and square, I, I believe. So in the spirit of dreaming, Demi, yeah. I'd like us to take a walk or a flight into 20 years into the future. Picture 20 years into the future. What are your hopes and aspirations 
for the capabilities or the role of women in the field of philanthropy? I do have a dream, Madonna. 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, even. And not just in philanthropy, to be honest, but just as us women. Yeah. My dream is that we we are not seen as an exception. You know, when, when women do things, it's it's not a surprise anymore. It's normal, right? I really look mm-hmm. forward to such a world where women are not beneficiaries in for the lack of the, a, a better word, but more participants, more creators. And when, when you talked about women dreaming as big as they can, I smiled because I like to call myself the ambitious sister. When I think of a project, <laughs> I go way big. I think about what it what could be, what could happen, what would happen if this blew up, what would happen if this happens in different countries. Mm-hmm. That's just how I am. And dreaming is free. So I don't stop dreaming. And I, I really would love a situation where women know that when they do dream and if they walk towards it in, in any form or way, it, dreams do become reality i dream that women from all corners of the globe from every background you can think of i dream that they are at the forefront driving innovation and making decisions that affect the future of giving that affects generations to come i hope to see women's voices being validated being amplified being celebrated and yet not as exceptions but as the norm as a normal thing right yeah um i would like a situation where they are no longer underrepresented communities and a a future where empathy collaboration community focused solutions that are the heart of philanthropy it's inspired by the way women naturally approach giving so these are these are things that i dream of (laughs) that is what i say happening so yes i am very ambitious and I and I'm not scared of dreaming. I, I I'm dreaming it and I hope to God this happens. You know, that the dream, that the the mission of giving Tuesday to actually radical generosity, that world, I think it's possible. And I hope that the universe is listening to this podcast and somehow aligns to make this happen. I hope <laughs> that so all too. the women that are listening in will be moved to make this happen in one way or another. I hope so too. I really do. I love how this panned out. really amazing. And it also gave me a lot of things to think about. I'm going back to the drawing board and I'm like, let me look at this dream again. Am I dreaming mm. big enough? Yes. Yeah, yeah that, that we don't lose that sense of wonder, surely. Thank yeah. you, Madonna. Thank you for Thank honoring you this invitation. <laughs> And for co-hosting slash co-visiting the community I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not the usual way I do podcast at all. This is the first, yeah. n- not the first time really, but I'm I'm rarely on the hot seat answering questions. Mm. So everyone, as we wrap up today's episode, we are reminded of the incredible power of generosity, especially when it comes from the heart of a woman. Thank you for joining us on this journey of inspiration and empowerment. Until next time, keep giving, keep inspiring, and let's all invest in women to accelerate progress. Bye, everyone. Three, two, one.